So I'm convinced that particular genetic diseases of the brain, when detected from birth or when it's seen or experienced, I'm of the belief that such is because of an ancestral convolution of neural paths as well as the residual factor of eternal recurrence the universe repeating itself so what happens in my belief is that because of the complicated nature of a human being a human being a human being i've been fucking saying that since i was born a human being <laughs> like a like a mr bean an actual bean <laughs> The, the nature of a human being is quite complicated compared to a tree, the grass, and other things, even though a lot of them share many similar many similarities in terms of this at the cellular level. Uh, some of those things have more chromosomes, believe it or not. So, but in any case, the human being, at least their brain is far more intricate than any other brain in the animal kingdom. And anyway, the human brain is the most sophisticated thing in this universe, as far as we know. It is sophisticated. Nothing comes close. So, what I'm saying is, when a person has high cognitive function, high IQ, whatever you want to call it, but high cognitive function is the right term, when a person has high cognitive function, even though they're born with ancestral memories and residual a residual factor from the universe repeating itself, their neural paths fire in patterns that can pretty much organise all that information so it doesn't confuse itself with where it is in the now. So all its chemical messengers in the brain aren't confused either about what it has to do. What I'm saying is that in particular human ethnicities, different traits are prevalent in terms of how the brain works. So a lot of children are born with genetic defects and it's prevalent in particular ethnicities more than anyone because of their ancestral habit, the habits of their ancestors. And because they acquire the neural paths, the neural firing patterns, and even, in my belief, the actual memories, the neurons, the code for it, because they have that from their ancestors, there is this... They, they pick up all the emotions and everything that came with it, which could be very bad emotions. It could be very negative, very dull, very strong, and imagine a baby born with that, not knowing what to do with that. So, from the get-go, as the fetus forms, there's an emotional uh, block, so to speak, an emotional emotional intensity from those acquired neuro from that acquired neurology. And when you also take the residual factor into consideration and the person appears again and is them can is when you know you're you and you're in time if a person's neurology is far wide in a particular way in other words they won't know how to function their brain won't know how to function its systems so it it still does it very close to a functioning human being. I mean, they still breathe, they still live, they can even talk, they can learn. But it's a little bit off because there is a lot of convoluted information. It, When you analyse other animals, they do not have anywhere near the rate of you know, that type of disability from birth. I mean, they do die at birth. Animals, it's very common for uh, puppies or things to die at birth for whatever reasons. But seldom is it the case that they acquire similar birth defects that human, humans have, uh, which we're all too aware of. And the, I don't want to name them because it's 
even though I'm speaking from a scientific viewpoint, they're beautiful. People with disabilities are beautiful. People who are born like that are still human beings. They're no different to you or I. It just takes one punch to the head and you could be very much a vegetable. So you should respect the frailty of humanity as much as its strength. And I'm just speaking from the scientific viewpoint that that, pro, that factor of life, that people are born that way, is also proof that, well, the, I should say the reason that is, as well as the proof, which is within that, is because there's this residual factor from the universe repeating itself. Imagine you're young, or go, and all that flashes back at a higher rate than it would with a normal human being. Imagine a past life is experienced all the time as a baby before you can even start to learn about your environment again. It would be very, very confusing. See, why animals don't tend to experience what we experience at a high rate seems to be because their neurology is not anywhere near geared to do the work we do. They're still very sophisticated animals. Don't get me wrong. I mean, their neurology is still very, very advanced and there's still a lot of things we don't know about animals, their brains, but it's nowhere near a human. Uh, animals eat, drink, survive, and do simple things. We humans are very, very, very advanced. Trust me, compared to an animal, fuck. The human brain is quite something, something to behold. Uh, but animals have simple instructions, simple coding, simple things, and even if the universe repeats itself, or well, I say that it is, it wouldn't be that complicated because at most, what would be flashing back from the time the animal is born is eat grass, climb tree, do this. And that also explains why animals, why particular animals can go straight from the day they're born into the wild and take care of themselves. They don't need to be retaught. There's programming there because it's simple. It's easy to. It's 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 there. It's flat. It's like it's flashing. The neuro neurology is like yeah, alive, alive, alive. Grass, grass, this, that. It, it, there's already links there. And if you look at evolution, as we've formed over millions and billions of years, from the simplest instructions, much more things happen. That's why when bacteria replicates, it just acts like bacteria. It's just simple stuff. And the more complicated things get, the longer particular species stay with their parent. But then there are those species that don't. They just straight into the wild. How do they know? So I'm saying that the different, the difference, the actual difference between humans and animals is a type of proof that hum, that, that residual. Uh, factor of the universe repeating itself occurs as well as ancestral memories and, and genetic programming that is carried along to all children uh, of whatever species and it makes all the world a fucking sense so what I'm saying in essence is a person born with genetic disabilities actually, are actually very 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 special what they're probably experiencing more than anybody else is deja vu. Now imagine you're born and your brain isn't is not prioritizing, okay? Priority, I highlight that. Your brain is not prioritizing attentional priority. It's not prioritizing the here and now. Learning again, being in the new environment because that takes precedence to any residual factor and to any ancestral memories. We're in the here and now. They're there, but they don't need to be fired. They can be fired as a memory or something to go, oh yeah, that's what that is, but it shouldn't take precedence. So there seems to be a priority convolution of the attentional faculty of particular children when they're born. And what probably what's probably occurring is constant deja vu. That's why a lot of them make noises. Not because it's not because there's something wrong with them. That's why a lot of them make weird noises and start, you know, what's this, what's that? They haven't learnt the human language again. They're just going off what's going through their mind. I'm of the very, very strong opinion that young children 
that's uh, that experience that even they go through to adulthood god love them who go all the way through adulthood i'm very very convinced that they're a crucial component to understanding what deja vu really is and because they can't lie they can't lie they can't lie like fucking you know naughty adults can so uh, they they can lie but it would not be a sophisticated lie uh, it would be very very easy to uh to get and the younger they are unfortunately because no one wants to dare experiment on a child on a child the younger they are it's almost impossible for them to lie and when you get a whole bunch of consistency from different testing you're able to see that whatever they're experiencing probably is residual the resi what I'm calling the residual factor from a repeating universe and because they can't learn in the here and now, because their attentional prioritization is warped and they're prioritizing something else from the past, another lifetime, another uh, from their ancestors, when they're only supposed to be there, those memories, as an aid, as, okay, this is what's formed me. They're all good. They should be there. If they're not there, then there's problems. But it, like anything that's good, it's going to be fired in the right sequence at the right time and in the right context otherwise it's the same principle with learning it's why you learn you remember it it's becomes action memory but if that's all you do then it starts to become a problem um, so what's happening when they're born is they're just deja vu patterns are firing in the neural parts in the neurology and it's just flashing. What the fuck? What the fuck? What's all this? Because that's there in priority. When it shouldn't be. It should be somewhere else. They can't learn in the here and now. That's what le the learning difficulties are. Not because they don't have the potential to learn. Not because there's something wrong with them intrinsically. But because... Whatever's there is blocking what they should be learning. What they should be doing. And you can speak to English all you like to them. You can flash cards all you like to them. But it's not making sense because something's, something else is there from the past firing as a neural sequence. And I'm saying a major responsibility of that is emotional stress from their ancestors. So when you mix this all together, because the human being can only be one with the residual factor, with the ancestral memories, with the new life. It's all one. It all has to fight together. It doesn't fire separately. You've only got one attention. You've only got one brain in that regard. It only fires in oneness. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are. It doesn't matter what problem you have or what not problem you have. So this attentional prioritization that's warped is, in my belief, what starts from the very time the fetus develops and the brain develops. And that starts to fire. And the reason that most well, Caucasian people, especially, have a much higher rate of that type of disability from birth isn't because there's anything wrong with them as people. I mean, for God's sakes, most of the greatest inventors in history are Southern Europeans and Europeans of all sorts. Caucasian. The majority of Maltese persons are Caucasian, so this isn't me speaking in a biased manner or against white people. For fuck's sake, look at me. Uh, <laughs> I'm as white as you can fucking get. Uh, but uh, what white people have done through the ages is prioritise false success, wars, gratification, all the vices. How about that? Is fucking here we go with the religious theme again. When you focus on those things for a very long time in your lifetime and then emotional stress happens especially while you have children that rubs off they acquire that so you're prioritizing the wrong thing that mental state mixes with whatever the mental state of your wife is all this comes together and when neurology can't merge successfully with the chromosomes it has when there's a conflict a genetic conflict a real thing that's when the problems arise 
So if one, in other words, the genetics will become as strong as their weakest link if it doesn't have a backup uh, gene to fill in, and that can happen. It happens frequently. So, and it's funny because it that doesn't happen as much with darker people, with Asian persons. It happens, but not as frequently. Absolutely not as frequently. So, with a lot of people from the British Empire, here we go again, they always based their existence on material success, on their name, on the family name, on the, we are esteemed by all of those in Oxford. Oh, oh, oh. You know, when you do that, all of a sudden, in the scope of time, I mean, for billions of years, humans, the human brain wasn't geared toward that. The priority, so evolutionary priority just, bang, changes. All of a sudden, something that's just invented becomes pre- uh, becomes priority. So the brain's shocked. What the fuck is money and all these things and a family name? and all, How's this priority, the brain's asking? So all of a sudden, these false attentional vectors, which is what I call them, because attention really is vectors, these vectors of neural paths, bang, 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 and just the way they work, the prioritization of them becomes false. It's not congruent. It's not in agreement with what it's always done or what it should be at least doing, a natural evolution, a type of progression that makes sense. All of a sudden, the brain's prioritizing being emotionally stressed because you don't, you can't pay your bills. It's, what the fuck? The brain is actually telling itself, is there something wrong with you, you fucking idiot? What the fuck's a bill? What the fuck's a debt? What the fuck's a financial scheme? Oh, hold on, we've existed for billions of years. What's all this shit? So when when you start forming these great emotional intensities and stress, especially as a banker, especially as a, a big businessman, all your emotional focus is on that type of of success on whatever that is and as the f- child inherits this that's what's at the front of its brain it it's confused it doesn't prioritize survival in learning as a very newborn baby should do it's got something else and because that's irrelevant it also in it the actual brain knows what an, a neural paths are that pertain to irrelevancy. Because it's an irrelevancy, it also fires neural patterns that are what, what I've called the residual factor. You know, it's repeating itself. It also fires ancestral memories. It doesn't need to, but because it's firing something completely pointless, well, it's going to fire that that's pointless too. It's not going to mix that with something that's point that, that's useful. And all of a sudden, that person born into the world doesn't know what they're doing. Or at least, or that they think they know what they're doing. Their brain sort of thinks it knows what it's doing. But at the same time, it's struggling. It's struggling to make sense of the new world. It's there because its parent or parents were grossly attached to materialism, material prioritization, and the brain is not familiar with that. The brain, all of the brain's history is relative to working, to uh, functioning, to prioritizing things that are meaningful, food, farming, uh, a lot of things that make sense. It's not programmed to sit in front of a piece of paper, yell at it, and say, It doesn't say a hundred thousand dollars, fuck! The evolutionary brain will be crying in the background going, what the fuck are you complaining about? What the fuck's a piece of paper with digits on it? That's not a fucking acorn. That's not a fucking apple. You stupid cunt. So the the evolutionary brain is very smart. It's in, It exists in everybody. So I think scientists should look into our very, very special brothers and sisters who I believe hold the key to the universe repeating itself at the very least, as well as ancestral memories.